welcome to Take Yoga Now. My name is Kali Ray Torres. I'm so happy to be here with you this morning, filling in for Wendy. And today, our focus and theme is intuition. This is such a valuable theme. I believe it really connects us all to being more present, being more aware in our daily life. As we flow through the sequences today, I really invite you to stay authentic. If something feels like it needs to be modified in any way, I may offer a few modifications. Listening to our bodies is going to support bridging that gap. And as we artfully listen, we begin to increase our intuitive awareness. Sometimes we think this is a, a woo-woo concept, but I have to share a story with you all today. If I was not listening to my intuition, I probably would not be a very happily married woman at this moment. Yes, just a few years back, I met my husband only because I had the willingness to walk up to a complete stranger and ask him if he was ready to open up his shoulders. Yes, the yoga teacher in me is always looking to help people out, but I want to invite you to consider how could your life be different just by pausing for a split second in those moments when there may be an opportunity for something to open up a world, whether it be in your physical body, where we slow ourselves down, or when we walk off this mat and step in, into our daily life. We're interacting with people all the time, whether it be in our relationships that are personal relationships, business relationships, or simply the willingness to try something spontaneous. Our quote of the day is, Intuition is the sense of knowing how to act spontaneously without even knowing why. Sylvia Clare. Let us start our practice this morning taking a comfortable seat. So just sit tall. Take this opportunity to roll those shoulders back. Open up your heart. Fill the lungs, inhaling nice, long, steady breath through your nose. Exhaling, feel the eyelids soften and close. Feel your shoulders melt down and back. And just notice that there's a sense of listening to what's here for us this morning. No matter where you've come from this morning or what your day encompasses, this practice will support you in being intuitively guided. Let your arms inhale to rise, reaching toward the sky, bringing all that new life, that new prana in. Exhale the hands to heart center. You can let the eyes softly open to gaze down the bridge of your nose. Now just start to lengthen the breath, inhaling through your nose, feeling that steady length from your seat to crown. And exhaling through the nose. Notice how you're starting to feel a lot more calm and present already. And we'll start to wake up this prana awareness with opening up the heart this morning. Place your hands around your knees. Inhale, lift the chin toward the sky. Fill your lungs. Expand across the collarbone. Bring your gaze upward to open up your communication center right there at the throat. Exhale, drop your chin forward, round the back, feel the kidneys pressing back toward the back of your mat, let your head drop. And then inhale, lift it up. Keep flowing with your own pace. So you're listening to your breath. Exhales, bring the belly back, bring the ribs back. Inhale, listening for that openness to receive. Maybe there's something you'd like to bring in this morning to your practice. Allow that inhale to fill up the heart space. And then exhale, dropping any tension, melting any tension in your face as you press the ribs back. Inhale brings you up nice and slowly. And we'll stay here for a moment. I'd like to show you how I've placed a blanket behind me and a couple of blocks behind me. If you don't have blocks this morning, that's just fine. You can use just one blanket rolled up. We're going to place that at the low back so that we can lay back comfortably. This is a back bend pose. 
and it helps to open up our shoulders, open up the heart. As we stay here for a few breaths, let your eyes softly close. If you don't happen to have a bolster or a block, please feel free to use a long pillow, maybe even a rolled up towel. So you're still reclined, taking that opportunity right now to deepen your listening. Stay with me, fill the lungs. Give yourself that moment to pause before you empty out the lungs. So frequently we are quick to rush in our daily life. So we're learning how to slow down the breath, slow down the mind, and bring our awareness to what we're really feeling. As you exhale and empty out all of the air at the bottom of the breath, feel your navel point hug slightly in and up. This little lift is going to come in in just a moment when we move through our sequence. Again, inhale one more full breath right there, lying on your back. Feel to the expansion of your ribs. Feel all the way up into the heart center. And then on your exhale, just let out a nice soft sigh. And then from here, moving from your back off to the side, we'll make our way up to all fours, moving your props off the mat, and placing your hands directly below your shoulders. So now we feel the connection through the length of the spine, and the melt in the heart center is a little bit more ease, a little bit more efficient in dropping any tension down through the shoulders, filling up the breath. Filling up the heart. Nice long breath as you melt that heart in cow pose. And then exhale, rounding it out again, drawing through your core. Your intuitive awareness is right there in your gut. So we're working with that this morning as well. Noticing as you exhale, can you hug to that inner power, that core connection, that gut awareness. Inhaling back to a flat back. This time we'll come with the right leg long. Nice, long, deep breath. Inhale, exhale, hug the knee to your nose. Squeeze it in. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, hug it in. Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, hug it in. This time we're going to send that right leg straight toward the back of the room and down dog. Three-legged dog. If this is too much for you this morning, just start to pedal out your feet a little. We have every level practitioner working with us this morning. So just staying with your own breath, allow yourself to find where the body is ready to open up this morning. Pedaling out the feet. I like to wag my happy dog. And then come back to a nice deep inhale, bend your knees a lot, lift your seat high to the sky. And then we're going to lower the knees back to the earth. Take it slow as you lower. Find that slight pause. Our core, our gut awareness before those knees touch the floor. We're here in a floated table, floating table. And exhale the knees to the floor. Inhale, generating that length of the breath, extend through the heel. Exhale, connect to your core, hugging deep. Inhale, generate length through your breath. Listen to the body. Where can you expand? And exhale, hug in. Can you hug to that center, your intuitive knowing? Inhale, nice and long. Exhale, full release of the breath. One more time, inhale to lengthen, extend, extend it back to downward facing dog. And exhale, bringing that left foot to meet the right, pedaling out the feet. So we're moving in a dance. Your intuitive awareness is the dance of your breath that moves through you. This means that we can play, we can move with freedom. We can work those heels from side to side. Just start to explore. Notice what's happening is the mind is really just moving deeper into the body and the awareness of what space is ready to open up. Take a nice deep breath, bend the knees a lot again. Take an awe. <sighs> and we'll journey right into a child pose for just a moment. Let your knees drop a little wider. Feel the elbows rest on the earth. Let your forehead touch. 
If your forehead isn't touching because you have tight quads, please feel free to place a blanket or a block right underneath your forehead. Staying with the breath here, calming our nervous system. This posture bathes the pituitary. It's a sense of moving deeper inward. Let your eyelids softly close. Remembering that this pose is available at any time during the course of our journey here today. So you can always make your way back to child's pose without my instruction if you need a rest. We'll take a deep breath. Make our way back to downward facing dog, making sure all 10 fingers are spread wide and that middle finger is pointing to the top of your mat. Let your heart melt. Let your shoulders roll externally. So we're feeling as where we're peeling the heart open. Think of a blossom right there. We're peeling the heart open and then connect to that length through your seat, lifting the low belly, low ribs. If your knees are slightly bent because you have tight hamstrings, that is absolutely fine. We want to get more length out of the spine versus curving in our lower back. Again, if your hamstrings are tight and your back is starting to round, just bend the knees a little bit. Inhale, extend that right leg back to the sky, stretch it long, and big step up to crescent lunge. A low lunge, draw from your core. This is that energy that we root through with the feet. We feel that powerful foundation to engage core energy, lift the inner thighs. Steady your breath. Now we can stay right here. If you're ready for a little more, if you're ready to fly this morning, let your arms rise. Notice the chest stays low, the hips lift lighter. Gaze is soft, breath is sweet. Gaze is right out in front of that right big toe. Imagine this is the flight of your heart that opening up to intentional space. Connecting with your intuitive awareness. Maybe that left knee needs to drop to the ground to stay powerful in this posture. Modifications are welcome. You can come right to that left knee dropping. We're here for two more breaths. The left hand comes to the floor. The right arm reaches open like a bird flying on its side. Take a nice deep breath. And then we're going to take some weight off the left hand. Lift, lighten that load. If you're very open in the shoulders, you might be able to start to open up the right side. Last two breaths there. Feel the right thigh crease draw back. Encourage opening in your inhale, lengthening through that heart forward. Exhaling the right hand to the floor, dropping the left knee, and we'll slide a blanket underneath for those of us who have sensitive knees. That might be a few of you out there. So trust your modifications again to find that little support under the left knee. Placing your hands up at your right thigh as you come on up. Anjali Asana, the heart offering pose. So when we steady our breath, we steady our intention, we begin to listen deeper. And for some of us that means right about now we're placing the hands down because there's a lot of sensation in the quad. We want to make sure we lighten the load as we go if it's necessary. Remember, you can always back off where needed. If you're still in this pose and feeling deliciously warm, ready for a little more, let your arms rise. We're only here for three more breaths. Bring in your intuition. Can you strengthen the length of the inhale? Yes, your breath is your strength. It is your intuitive knowing. One more deep inhale for length. And hands down. Take it slow as you step that left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale halfway up. Exhale fold. Inhale rise, reaching high. Exhale bow. Inhale halfway up. And step back to top of a push-up. Now notice, where does the mind go as soon as we're holding this? Are we clenching the face? Are we turning this into something that's not so fun? We want to remember that we can be in the dance. Inhale lowers the knees until they're half an inch off the ground. Exhale, press it out. We've got three more. Inhale, exhale. 
Inhale, let the knees barely touch the floor. Keep those hips level. Exhale, press it out. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, right to downward facing dog. Feel free to say, ah. Our connection through our core lets that left foot lift to the sky. Press out through your heel. Really feel that low belly drawing in and up. Exhale, step the foot forward to crescent lunge. So we find our roots, right? We find our connection in these foundations. The four corners of the left foot, the big toe pad and pinky toe pad of the right foot. When our roots are solid, we get light. So the hands can come off the floor maybe an inch. Just find that place. Again, you can always lower the back knee. Arms reach out like wings. Listen to the breath. Fill and empty. Strong back leg, strong kneecap. We can feel that hug at the midline here. Don't let that left knee float open. Feel the hug of the inner thighs. One more full breath. And right hand down. Left arm opens up. We can feel that connection through the lightness of the low belly. Let's come up onto the right fingertips. Lift the inner thighs. Say hello to your left hand. Look up and open up. Oh, yes, doesn't it feel delicious to feel that opening in your heart? Take a nice sigh there. And left hand comes to the floor. Right knee journeys down to the floor. Finding your blanket if you have one. If you're a little off balance in this pose, you can always curl the back toes under. And bring the left hands up to the left thigh. So take a moment to listen. What's happening in those hips? Can we feel the left thigh crease hugging back, the right thigh coming forward? Is there some emotion that's starting to show up? Any kind of resistance? Instead of letting that be a hindrance to your practice, see it as a gift. Anytime we allow ourselves to feel the emotions that rise to the surface, it's saying yes to listening intently. Your intuitive awareness is being awakened. Take a deep breath there. Reach up, look up. Exhale, hands down. Foot back, and we'll take it through vinyasa. Lower slow if you need those knees. Drop the knees. Inhale, cobra, or up dog. Downward facing dog. Let's bring the knees to the blanket or the floor and come to seated in hero for a moment. So as we start to feel that energy rise up into the heart center, everything's expansive here. We're about to come into a pose called camel. And I'd like you to use your prop. If you have a block, try it for the first round with the block. If you have any discomfort in the low back in this pose, please take modification one. We'll start with that. Again, you can use your blanket and unfold it if your knees are quite sensitive. I feel pretty good with the mat. Toes curled under. Now we're going to feel that breath lift the low belly in and up. Very different from hugging and squeezing like an abdominal crunch. Uddiyana Bandha means to fly in and up. So we're letting our awareness shift from that lower center into the upper energy centers of the body. When our roots are solid, our heart can get light. Just like a tree, we're sending that powerful foundation of energy down through our toes and up through our thighs, we feel that lightness. In camel pose, Ustrasana, we start with the hands at the low back. Take a deep breath. Fill up the heart here. As you exhale, feel the triceps hug behind. Use the heel of the palm to press the sacral bone down and the heart up. Now some of you are feeling like you can move deeper. So why not? Let's place that right hand on the block next to the right ankle and the left arm up to the sky. If that says, uh, I'm not so sure about that, your low back might be feeling like that's a little too low. 
then just come back to that first modification. I'm going to take you through the third modification. For those of you who are still ready for more, right hand at your heel and left arm to the sky. If that feels still feels really nice, let the left hand drop to the left heel. The other modifications are available. Steady your breath. Listen to your body. If it's time to come out, this is your intuitive opportunity to be present. Let's all take a nice big lion's roar. Stick out your tongue. Let go of some tension in your throat. Inhale. Exhale. Stick out the tongue. One more. Let the head gently lift so the chin comes toward your chest. Protect your cervical spine. Left arm up, right arm up, and we sit <clears throat> right back on our heels or on your nice little block there in hero pose. So just taking a moment to feel what you have just opened up. Sitting tall, let your eyes close. You're journeying into the heart of the matter. In this particular pose, we're just allowing the stillness to permeate our being. Feel the connection of your tailbone dropping slightly as if there was a wall behind your low back. The tailbone drops down as the inner heart center lifts up. On the exhale, let your right fingertips touch the floor to your right. Let your left arm reach to the sky. Lengthen through that whole left side body. And we're going to let the right palm touch the full palm, touch the earth. And you can either keep your gaze looking down if you've had any neck issues to protect the neck. If your neck's feeling pretty darn good this morning, you can look forward. And if you're feeling like you have more rotation, more space, look up toward the palm. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, root down through your left side body, left hip is grounded. We're going to take a deep breath there, deep breath. Exhale, feel a slight drop of the tailbone. This opens up your obliques, the side body long, and then deep breath, exhale to look down, release tension in your face. And inhale, rise up, reach through that whole left side. The left palm stays in your lap, the right palm comes right on top. Take a moment before rushing into the next side. Can you close your eyes here? And feel the sensation that's still present. It almost feels like that whole left side of the body is higher. And it might be. The left shoulder might be slightly higher. Increasing the length of that right side, lift the right arm to the sky. Let your left fingertips tiptoe out to the left side of your mat in alignment with your hip. Keep reaching as you draw up, you'll feel the right sit bone stay down. So polarity is very important in our yoga practice. With every inhale, there's an exhale. With everything that reaches up and rises out, there's something else that's staying rooted, staying grounded. And that's the power of listening. We can feel, am I reaching too far, am I trying to get out of my body, or am I centered and grounded in the body and able to expand from that place? Some of these little cues that I'm giving you visually are just to help aid in feeling more deeply this morning. Where are we feeling that opening? Take a deep breath through your whole right lung. And on your exhale, gently tuck the tailbone just a little bit to feel more in the obliques and look down. Inhaling, exhaling, draw the navel back. You can stay there or look to the side. If you have full range of motion, up to the palm. Notice any tingling, any opening. And exhale, look down. Take your deep exhale through the mouth. And rise through that right side body. Reaching up, opening up. And let both arms reach out like wings. So we open up our hearts, bring the hands behind, 
interlace the palms. And instead of yanking at the, the, the knuckles to press them back, feel as though you're peeling the next layer of your heart open. The next layer of your intuition is sound. And we're going to keep that awareness as we lift the chin, look to the sky, take another deep breath, and exhale. Feel as though your shoulder blades are dropping down the back. Inhale, exhale one more time, drop the shoulders down the back. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, hands to heart center. So we've been working with our core of intuition today, a little deeper work for us here in rabbit pose. This is an excellent posture to also help digestion have you ever had one of those experiences where you were still processing an experience multiple hours or days after? This is one of those poses that's going to help us to allow our core energy to support processing that, digesting our expression or our experiences. So I'd like you to imagine like there's an orb of light in your belly and you're just here mixing it up as you're inhaling and exhaling. And if there's anything that's been held on to in your experience, you can just imagine like a feather duster. We're cleansing that area. So it's a very powerful visual aid. Let your toes curl under. This is like the vacuum pose, I call it. Let's bow forward. Let the head rest on the floor, but without putting weight on the neck. Now we're going to try to get the head closer to the knees. But again, the head is resting on the floor as lightly as if there was something underneath your head you didn't want to crush. Maybe something valuable, like the eggs that you're going to make for yourself for breakfast after this. Take a deep breath. Let your head rest on the floor. Slide the hands back to see if we can grab the ankles or the feet. The hands might even curl around the soles of the feet. Tuck the chin. Lift the seat and breathe right behind your heart. Exhaling, filling on the inhale, exhaling, pressing that space behind your heart toward the top of your mat. One more deep breath there. Place the hands first, either side of your head. Lift the head and then come to puppy pose. Plant the fingertips right out in front of you. You might need to walk the knees back just a little further so that we don't let the chest touch the thighs. Deep breath in. Exhale, press your seat back. Lengthen through the side waist. Drop the tailbone slightly. And we'll begin to walk the hands off to the right side, off of the mat. We're stepping out of the box here for a moment. Deep breath in. Hands stay shoulder width apart and we root through those fingers so that we can traction the hips back to the left. Say hello to your obliques. Say hello to all of the space under the rib cage that gets stuck from sitting in chairs. And then let's just let out a nice deep breath. Exhale. <sighs> Allow yourself to sigh. Now let's look up again. This time we're going to turn this into a little bit more of a yin expression. Uncurl the toes. Let the tops of your feet touch the floor and let your palms rest. Keep the palms where they are, a little traction there, and then melt back into it. A little more relaxed version of this deep oblique opener. The left side is our feminine energy. The right side is our masculine energy. We want to be balanced in both so that we can both get the project done, but be clear and be good about listening to our intuition at the same time. So whatever we're working on, we're working on balancing both the masculine energies and the feminine energies so we can be intuitively sound, inhaling, and exhaling. That's why we do both the right and left side, not just so that we feel it in our bodies, but it's the nature of our being is made up to be balanced of 
our active and passive qualities. We have a little bit of both, and we're able to stay in balance. Inhale, exhaling, listening to your body's edge. Notice if there's a little bit more work. Are we giving ourselves an opportunity to listen? Just breathe and listen. Inhale brings your heart forward. Look up. Let your hands drop again. Uncurl the toes and exhale. Melt back into it. You might be able to drop the seat deeper. And we're going to slide those hands back to center. Take a nice deep breath and melt down into child's pose. This time, maybe the knees can be closer to each other. If you have very tight quads, I invite you to keep the distance wide between your knees. But if you're a little more open after our work in the quads today, let's see if we can bring the knees closer and let the hands come back. This is as long as you don't feel any pressure in your neck. The palms rest either side of the feet. The gaze is up to the third eye. Let the shoulders drop. And then we're taking our time rolling up very slowly. Tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, and drop the ribs back. Let your head and neck be last to roll up slow. Keeping your eyes closed for just a moment there. Your awareness remains inward. And then softly open the eyes. Let your feet come out in front. We're going to sit on the edge of that blanket. We did a little yang work to warm things up, stir the pot, clear that inner work of where tension lies. And now we prepare for a little yin work. So sitting on the edge of a blanket if you have one. If not, it should be all right. Let your knees bend. Let your feet drop open to a diamond shape. So our yin forward bend is really just about letting gravity do the work. Talk about intuitive, right? You'll find that you'll be breathing in this pose for a few breaths. And as we continue on, your body is going to let go more and more. If you're very tight, just let the head drop first. If you've had a spinal issue, a spinal injury, my friends, then simply sit in meditation during this pose, and you can just work with Letting the head roll from side to side. Again, I'm inviting you to do what I might not be doing next. That's really about listening to your inner knowing. So, do what calls to you. If that first pose felt more appropriate based on spinal issues, then you'll stay there. And if you're ready to move along, bow forward. Keep coming forward. Obviously, I've been practicing my forward bends for a while. So I don't want you to think that you should be somewhere other than where you already are. Remember, intuition is about listening to being fully present. So we'll start maybe even just letting the front body melt. We're right here for 10 more breaths, my friends. Stay with it. Notice what's starting to happen. I want you to imagine your back body expanding with light, beautiful, brilliant, golden light. Have you ever seen the light from the sun as it pours through the trees? This is what we're imagining here. 
and let your body be bright, be brilliant with breath. Stay with what you're feeling emotionally. Notice, is there a quality that you can exhale that you'd like to show in your practice? Maybe it's feeling in balance, restored. Maybe it's being able to trust yourself. Steady the breath. The longer we stay here, the deeper the body's going to drop. Anything that's holding on, it might just be relaxing your face, your tongue, your eyelids. Deep hip opener, as well as we're feeling that in our adductors. Take a nice deep exhale. And stay where your core is. You bring this back up. Let your head be completely relaxed. Notice there's a thread of energy. That thread of energy draws the navel back. The head relaxed. The ribs back. Head still relaxed. The shoulders back. Each piece stacking on top, letting the head be last to come to seated meditation. Feel the wave of prana that is now washing over you. Just as we are bathed with sunlight, we can also be bathed with our own light. Consider the power of energy as just like a fountain. As the breath rides up the spine and lengthens the spine, imagine it cascading over your crown like a fountain, a fountain of grace, a fountain of peace. We're going to come to a nice simple twist now. You can stay on that bl blanket if you'd like, or you can remove it. I find it easier for those of us with tight hips. Right hand stays around your knee. Give it a hug. We're going to cross that left leg over so the right hand is holding the knee. The left hand moves directly behind you on your fingertips. Some of us will stay with the hand there. As we place the hand there, give it a little hug to the midline. If you're still ready for more of a twist, right arm up and outside that left leg. You'll find your anchor there as the elbow presses into the outer thigh. Inhale for length. Exhale to twist. We're wringing out any remnants of any stale breath. Inhale. Exhale the stale air from your lungs. Two more. and really feel that left lung opening to the left. One more time. Deep breath in. Feel that seat grounded. Exhale. Twist at your ribs. And gently come back to center. Take your time unwinding, bringing the left leg on the bottom, bringing the right leg on top, and bringing it outside the left leg. Left hand right there at your thigh, at the outer knee. Right arm reaches behind. Inhale, sit tall, lengthen. Exhale, giving that leg a hug. Now we can stay here for the remainder. If you were taking that modification on the first side, take it again on the second. And if you moved on, come on with me. Left arm right out to the sky and bring the elbow outside the thigh. Inhale for length. Exhale, feel the twist. Again, inhale, fill the lungs, lifting lightness into the body. And exhale, wringing out your core. Just two more breaths there. Two 
keep your face relaxed. One more deep breath in. And slowly come back to center. Extending the legs forward. And we'll just shake out the legs. Take a nice deep breath. Reach the arms to the sky. Exhale, starting to fold forward, starting to hinge forward. And that might be just an inch or two. Keep leading with those heart, uh, heart strings that are attached to your fingertips. Imagine your heart strings attached to your fingertips, lengthening. If there's still more room to fold, coming forward, keep coming forward. You might notice, oh, there's a little more space today. If you have a, a lot of tension in your hamstrings, grab onto your feet. That's just fine. And sit up tall like so. If you can inch the heels forward a little bit more, go ahead and do so. And we're going to move away from trying to round it out like so. We want this distance between chest and thighs to remain connected here for a moment. This lengthens the spine, takes the weight out of the lower back. You can stay right there if you're feeling like you've met your edge. For those of you who are quite open, keep coming forward. Eventually the chest touches the thighs in Paschimottanasana, and you may take a wrap with the hand around the wrist if it's available. Last three deep breaths. One more deep breath here. Release the hand if you have it. And we'll roll onto the back. Let the head be last. You have to reposition, finding yourself on your back, completely relaxed. If those of you who have had any kind of a spinal issue need support under your knees, then by all means, place your blanket right there under the knees. This will help if you've had an achy back. And you can make that bolster a little higher too if you use more than one blanket or if you have a bolster available. Letting the feet drop open, let's slide the shoulder blades down the back for our final resting pose. Last but not least, Shavasana. It is here that we find the integration of our practice. Let your eyes melt. Let your forehead soften. Give yourself permission to listen deeper this morning. As you're lying in Shavasana, remaining with the eyes closed, bringing your gaze just gently up toward the third eye without forcing any tension in your eyelids or eyeballs. I leave you with a beautiful chant today, a chant that helps to remove obstacles. It's one of the oldest chants in our knowing of the Sanskrit lineage. It's one of the chants that helps to support clearing away any negative energy or thoughts. And it helps to harmonize and actually works on a cellular level. The Gayatri Mantra. Just listen as you lie relaxed, taking nice deep exhales and dropping the breath all together, letting it move and flow in its most organic state. Tour Varingham.
Vargo Devasyari Mahi Dio Yona Racho Om Shanti 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 Divine grace is moving through each and every one of us. And as we slow down and take the time to move deep, we listen with all of our faculties. We are capable of so much. And as we continue to practice regularly, we not only deepen the awareness of the space in our own bodies, but we begin to listen more effectively. Remember to take your time throughout the day, and I leave you with a soul assignment. Practice pausing before you speak. Practice listening very deep. Take this next week to listen and speak as effectively as possible, as clearly as possible. Can you listen with your heart, not just your mind, to every person that comes into contact with you. Notice if judgment comes in. And give yourself permission to put down the judge and hire the witness for the next week, practicing with your intuition, listening with all of your being, so that the miracles can occur. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to guide you through this practice here today. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for sharing your practice with Take Yoga Now. Namaste.